to those kids. Let me talk to you. Inside, you hear the cozy sound of some kind of heater sputtering. The <laughs> woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. If you can't see, how did you know I was I here? I still have a golden ear. Come, come. She beckons you toward her. Lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. I'm a cop. I don't cause trouble. I take care of trouble. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Would have been here before? No, not you personally. I met the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was brooding. Needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him. It took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. What kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. If I'm considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me that? I am an ill omen, all right, proceed. You're still welcome here as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. Her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. You're just giving it to me? No one is using it and God knows it's not much anyway. You can stay there. Um... Uh... Okay. I'll take it. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. What's in this fishing village? Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. She sounds tired. What do you mean? This is pretty much a non-place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. Pornographically poor? The hell? <laughs> what? And I'm gonna repeat it, like that makes any kind of sense. The lack of wealth is the one thing we've got in abundance. The woman smiles cryptically, that's what I thought. Then, all's not lost. As you can see, even in pornographic poverty, people make do. <laughs> I don't understand. She smooths a wrinkle in her skirt. At least those who remain. She falls silent and turns to look over her shoulder as though looking for someone. There's nobody there. There's got to be something here. Tell me. Over there, you can find more of the same. Sharks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. Between here and Jamrock. A dusty sea of old trees, all covered in industrial soot. Small houses under them, an overgrown park. What's the pox? An old military hospital and its surroundings. Or it used to be, during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. 
Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Sharks are as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. But they are away right now. She nods her head across the courtyard. And then there's the drunks. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Oh yeah, I met a couple of them. I'm sure you did. Nature keeps them in rotation. A new face pops up every now and then, and an old one disappears and is forgotten. This is who we are. Is there a way to make a little money around here? Here? For you? No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks try hiding from their women and then forgot about. (laughs) All right, there's another topic I'd like to ask about. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. What's further down the coast? Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorean Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. The ecclesiastes have tried to get things going there. But things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. She's not telling you all she knows. Keep her talking. I feel like you're leaving stuff out. What else is going on? Well, there's that music. Music from across the sea. (laughs) It started a few days ago, and now it's blasting even through the night. I don't like it. And now, suspicious-looking people are sneaking around the church. I don't like that. Those would be the dance music enthusiasts in their tent. Mm -hmm. What else is on down the coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run-down bunch of houses, empty. Which is it then, apartments or electrical plant? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something, before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Who would want to come to a fish market here? No one. That's why it's closed. (laughs) It was once a bustling place, back when I was young. And so was everyone else. Now, what catch we do bring in goes straight into a lorry for the Delta or somewhere else. That's it? There's got to be more along the coast? What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Lensend. Used to be a supply depot, we think. Sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jam shut though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. She drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. Tell me about yourself. Who are you here? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr. Lieutenant Double Yafetter Harrier Dubois. You can call me to kill you, Sunset. I'll just give her my name. Quite a handle you got there. So many titles. One of them, Double. The old woman nods with evident respect. She's got a couple of ranks herself. On a chief and so on. Do you know anything about a lost jacket? What do you want with a lost jacket? 
That's for me to know and you to find out, wink at her. <laughs> You're trying to wink at me, aren't you? I can't see. Or did you forget that part? Aww. Are you getting a reward for it at least? Mm, not really, no. What? You're fetching someone's pissing laundry free of charge? Did you not have anything better to do? I forgot to ask for a reward. None of my business, either way. How you spend your hours is up to you. Anyhow, you might ask Lillian if she's seen anything lately. That girl's got a way of attracting lost and broken things. Thanks, bye. What is in here now that we can get in here? Thank you, autosave. The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Unlock the door with the key. The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. I'm still going to have to pay Gart to get into the hotel room and figure out the source of the expression and fix the water faucet. So I don't know how... Oh, there's a bed. I don't know how useful staying here is going to be. Maybe after we fix the water faucet and find the source of the expression? Or, or will this help us find the source of the expression? An old mirror hangs oh, on the wall. Would... You see the reflection of your face in it. Adorned with the expression. So all I have to do is fix the water faucet in the, um, the other place. And we should be okay. You see the waves see in a church. Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching, and almanac from 39. You had a thought, what was it? Floorboards creak under your step. Intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving you pleasant warmth. A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. Listen. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? My new hangout where I could silently sit, drink, and die while looking while watching the waves roll in. My forward base for the coastal part of the operation. It's free, it's good enough, I could live here. Looks like my new home. Wonder where the old one went. Westward, across the canal, towers the whirling in rags. Door number one on the second floor is locked. Behind it lies a trashed room. One floor below, behind the counter, stands an irritable man. Yeah. In a small shack in the fishing village, a baroque heater hums quietly, emanating a sense of comforting warmth. A wash basin lies on the table. The water inside reflecting the somber face of the world. Far away, on the corner of Perdition and the Main, a nondescript building, obscured in a haze. It's vacant and lost, just like its tenant. Thank you, Strange Sensation, for a fair assessment of the current situation. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Look. Under the floorboards. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. I don't like that suggestion. Look under the floorboards. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red. Hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. Shut up, physical instrument. I could do it. I'd have to fix my hand-eye coordination, but I could do it. What's this? Logic. Look under the floorboards. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Hand-eye coordination. This is interfacing, right? Hand-eye coordination. I needed hand-eye coordination for something else, too. 
None of these do hand-eye coordination. On the table, you see a bowl of water, right. a rough soap, like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman. You use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chips oh. against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, the air brushing against it chilly. Feel your clean shaven cheeks. They feel so smooth. Surprisingly so. Healed health. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. We're shaving the right call. The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Well, hey. The beardless nature of your cheeks makes the expression seem even more like a terrifying grimace. <laughs> Maybe that'll help our look in the mirror? An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean no. shaven face. Electrochemistry. You're still not accustomed to it. I, I have stuff for electrochemistry. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. Mm. The expression still fixed low. to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. It's too nope. late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. Alright, let's leave. Look under the floorboard. Look under the floorboards. Is there even a way to do that? I'm, I'm confused and disturbed. Tear. What are these doing in the fish? The boat is floating freely in the water, unmoored. Oh, boots. Cavalry boots. Hi, officer. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overtone boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. Anything I can help you with? Um, as always, I am the law ringer. That depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicibla. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible has been since they built this place. The wind rattles her earrings. All right, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. She gestures toward the fishnets. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. I'm looking for someone, maybe you can help. Let's see, who are you looking for? I'm looking for a missing cryptozoologist. Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People who look for animals that are hard to find. Aha, like snowmen. Snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two old guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. And the like? Right. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. Oh, you're getting it. And it is gorgeous. Where'd they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? A working class husband? Yeah, I'm not really looking for that anymore. <laughs> not much into the middle class ones either. Could do with some landed gentry. But apparently they don't make those anymore. The husband isn't for me. I'm looking for him for his wife. I wish I could help you with that, but I haven't seen your working class husband. Maybe I can help you find someone else. She seems genuinely sorry for not being able to help you. I'm not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? 
Um, idiot Doom Spiral over there needs his jacket. Have you seen it? Remarkable. <laughs> that one already lost everything else, and now his jacket too. It's a good thing too that he has an actual police officer looking for it. Good old Doom Spiral, upper management to the core. A smile lights up her face. That's odd. Is she actually impressed? I'm just trying to help out a stranger in need. How sweet of you. It really is. I check around the abandoned fish market on the boardwalk. Drunks are inexplicably drawn to markets. Might be why they have such trouble staying in business. A phenomenon that the spectral hand theory of the market fails to account for. If one of them lost something, that's as good a place to start looking as any. What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. What else? I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insul Indian cuisine. Is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. What have you found? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. Really? Mines. Mines. You need mines. Tell me about the mine, I guess. Well, the RCM has to wait for another one, because some army folks came by, took it in the middle of the bay, and blew it up. The blast was surprisingly timid for such a huge spiky thing. She spits over the railing. Spiky? Must have been a naval contact mine. Nice sword. Point at it. Does it come with a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. She smiles at her own joke. Do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. Isn't that what guns are for? Guns are expensive. And fragile, I think. Besides, I got kids. Can't have guns around them, and sometimes a sharp blade is enough to keep folks at bay. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Can I borrow the sword? No, I'm afraid not. Attempting to confiscate the blade I use to keep these animals in check. You would put me in an early grave. Her eyes are smiling as her hand moves to the hilt. She refuses, but your word is the law. You are law. Why don't more women arm themselves if it's so effective? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. That does not go for real men. It does not go for you. Show her. Show her the wonder. Coach means the expression. Behold point to the expression on your face. <laughs> Not bad. Do you like it? Sure. It looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. The traces of her laughter are still there, in her eyes, fading fast. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. <laughs> Why, if they're thick-headed? Guess I enjoyed the way he bled. Her expression doesn't change. It's hard to say if it's a joke. If it is, then why the melancholy? Where's your husband now? Gone. Oh, God. 
Gone where? To the waves. The sea took him. It was a long time ago. <sighs> Say no more, wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. <laughs> Time's the bad. It's healthy to let go and move on. Gotta keep the wheel spinning. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. She crosses her arms. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. She glances at the village where two kids are playing with what look like rocks. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. Do it! Hit on the widow! It's the right thing to do! <sighs> Don't know a good spot yet. Okay, alright, explore the coast first. <laughs> Suggestion. I take it that's your skiff? Point at the overturned boat. Sure is. The sun, I call her, coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. Okay, I'll be seeing you. So if I know a good spot, we can go on a date. Planks creep beneath your weight. Ladder leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. Alright, I wanna get out of here. Can you do that? Let's see what this floorboard issue. I don't seem to have an option to look under the floorboards, but if I come back out this way. This way? I can't get over here. That's so weird. You don't you just say creepy stuff like that and then Okay, so this is where we were. That's a place. I wanna figure out ooh. I should go back to Gart and talk to him, maybe. Well, I think these are the guys we're looking for. What is it? Tell me what it is. Tiny cages carefully constructed. Yeah, I think these are our guys. Could this be the buoy Kalesi told you about? But I can't do anything with it. Heavy military blockades are riddled with bullet holes and crumbling. People are starting to soggy log smell of ignition fluid and they won't light up. It's almost impossible to get a fire going this near to the ocean. I think these are our researchers. Here we go. Yep. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officer. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. You don't seem happy to see the RCM? Oh no, it's alright. I'm just busy. What's this about? He glances at the cylinder. Lena sent me. She's been worried about you and is waiting for you to come back. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. And we can't go all the way around the 881. That was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's fixed now. You can go back. <laughs> the water 
long's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. Withhold the whole story. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. He refastens a bit of netting that has come loose in the wind. For all his passion, this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. Tell me about this phasmid that you're looking for. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialised techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. What sort of specialised techniques? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defences that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defences work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. How big is it? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm, so... Uh, Seems puny, to be honest. Size of a grown man's forearm, okay. Why are you so interested in this stick bug? Doesn't seem to be as colorful as some of the other cryptids I've heard about. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. He gives you a sideways smile. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, <laughs> of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defences, find out how it stayed hidden so long. He shakes his head. What have you discovered so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one? Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. He holds up an index finger. If no one can prove it exists, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. He says, briskly, even though he seems taken aback by it. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Lena said there was a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Is it possible the phasmid has died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Um. Oh, uh, what now? Yes. The females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. <laughs> a travesty, a crime against passion and common sense. <laughs> Nature does not concern herself with ethical propositions. As a scientist, my interest is strictly dispassionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive. But Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Lena designed them? Yes. He says with some pride. How do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can't get back out. 
At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesised that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect? Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. A carnivorous stick insect seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. Not a big fan of skepticism, this one. What will you do if the traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Let me ask you about something else. Yes. What? Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. He looks south where Lena would be. Come on, Morale. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. Really? She saw it? She didn't tell me that. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Absolutely. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Maybe you should go back to the Whirly and warm up and come back to check the traps later. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. What if I checked the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. He looks at you with obvious surprise. Cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. Where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... He gestures to the trap in front of him. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. Well, what do I do if there's a phasmid in one of them? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. What if I encounter the phasmid in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do... I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. He takes out a small white spray can. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Lay it on me. Wise choice. 
He douses you with the odd smelling spray and gives you a satisfied nod. This is the smell of dying reeds, of longing crumbling into the water. I'm ready, let's go. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. Finally, you're being sensible. I'll start packing right now. If it's more cryptid related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later too. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? How did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up if you prod a little. So you're living your childhood dream out here? It's not child's play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. His eyes narrow. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Real? I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. I don't. It's a profession just like any other. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. Has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. What kinds of evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts, like the one that brought us here, to look for the phasmid. I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. You think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough? Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration. Not real research, and certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. So you've never discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. How many cryptids have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorised as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation and data collection. So only two have been proven real? Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Two out of 4,000 isn't even 1%. In fact... It is 0.05%. Ever more magnificent, should our search contribute to making that number 0.075%. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Well, thank you for explaining that. Yes? Uh, let's talk about specific cryptids. Alright. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists. So I don't know what... We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it. Since you've offered to help, you need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena, or his friend Gary. He won't just talk. Which cryptid did you almost catch? A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialists would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. What are willow people? They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals, as they seem to have evolved directly from trees. He says it in a self-explanatory, everyday manner. They're very, very thin, almost flat in fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, 
They're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. So I may have seen these willow people without knowing it? You probably have. How did you almost catch a willow person? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender colour. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. And then what? I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. I know it sounds like we were snacking on funny mushrooms, but I did see motion and colour. Mine is not a confirmed sighting of a cryptid, however. Much goes into verifying these things, and my account comes short of a few standards. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. And Lena's sighting of a phasmid is... Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. I know about the green ape. I even have a green ape pen. Take out the pen. I see you've been talking about cryptids with Lena. The kind green ape is one of her favourites. A warm wave passes him. Of course, the kind green ape is her favourite, he thinks. Aww. We travelled to South Safra to look for it once. Gary and I got stuck in a rainstorm, though, and had to spend most of our time there in a little village. The search was fabulously unsuccessful, but the people were very nice. I'm glad they didn't understand what Gary was saying about them. What? South Safra? They're just on a different rung of the ladder, Morel. I had no problem with them. Really? You kept complaining about how dirty everything is, but we digress. They're a nascent culture. I just didn't feel comfortable. And let's change the topic, okay? Talk about your critters, or whatever. He mumbles something. Yes, back to cryptozoology. You don't want to sow disagreement between friends. I know about the most dangerous cryptid, the Gnome of Jeroma. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. But do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? He doesn't want to make it feel like you knowing it is some big deal. Living? No. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. The Dread Moose? Yes. The dread moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Does it also attack people? Human remains have been found deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that what you will. What does the dread moose look like? Just like an ordinary ardent moose. Then how can you tell if it's the ordinary kind or the dread kind? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful and hard to identify. A moose that looks like any other moose. What's going on here? He's kidding, right? I'm not completely sure about this dread moose. The bodies found in the forest are just one piece of physical evidence. There's more. What's the other evidence? The recent surge in the moose population. As hidden carnivores, the dread moose are effectively removing competition for both themselves and their evolutionary cousins. Why would it need to hide its carnivorous nature? Moose are already being hunted for sport. Can you imagine what would happen if they came to be viewed as predators? Well, how would a moose understand that? What exactly is the relationship between a carnivorous moose and a regular moose? The carnivorous moose are a very young species, the result of a genetic mutation that fared well in the process of natural selection. It makes sense that such a majestic animal with natural weapons, antlers, would come to rule the forest. The only strange thing is that it took so long. Are there reliable eyewitness accounts of moose killing other animals for food? One slaughterhouse at the outskirts of the woods in Vasa reported that its staff kept seeing moose in the distance. The moose would just stare at the building as though they were waiting for something. 
Its eyes bloodshot and full of cruelty. That does sound suspicious. And that's not all. Some of the slaughterhouse apprentices went hiking by a nearby creek and saw a moose nibbling on an unidentified carcass. This isn't something unique. Various species of deer have been known to scavenge when plant food is scarce. Anyway, there is more than enough evidence to justify a thorough search for the dread moose. Let's close the subject before it turns into an argument. Here is a man who has had more than its fair share of heated arguments and would, surprising as it may seem, prefer not to have any more. I know about the biggest cryptid, the giant of Coconur. That's impressive, I guess. But have you seen it with your own eyes? No. Of course you haven't. Have you seen it? I haven't had a chance to travel to Coco Nor. No. And I likely never will. The Samuskilt Desert region has been embroiled in a small civil war for the last eight years. I fear this mindless barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities have grown rare recently, while they once used to be constant. Yes, sightings of mirages are constant. A mirage is a constant phenomenon that people have no time to report when a war is going on. It remains unclear what this has got to do with you seeing it, as he was inquiring before. He was just being defensive. I know about Chirobacter catlensis. Oh, everyone knows about that one. Thanks to Professor Mijanu being the talk of the town for a time. He coughs into his fist. Although, probably because her life ended as a result of her working gutler, no one remembers her contributions to the search for the Nong Ok. The Nong Ok? A flightless cursor owl found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nong Ok to run faster than any other avian. Perhaps any other animal. Who knows? When it's not hunting its prey in its manner, the Ok hangs from tree branches, like a bat, waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. Mijanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. When did she disappear? Oh, decades ago. In the 30s. I didn't know her personally, of course. The chasm of academic pretension still stood before us, even though she had unusual courage for someone from the other side. Tell me about a cool cryptid, any cryptid. No offence, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Me? I'm not a people person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. He brushes an errant strand of hair from his eyes. All right. By all means. I'm done now. 